In the most recent edition of A History of Western Society, we've added to the interest in social history by bringing in all of the new developments in the field of social history over the last, let's say, 20 years, and that is to say um, the emphasis on material culture and material artifacts, and we now have many pictures of artifacts in the book. We've also added a lot on cultural history to the book, and that's not to say the old-fashioned kind of high-level cultural history, but really the history of understanding people's identities and people's experience and the meaning that they make out of their everyday life. I was really excited to join the McKay team because when I started to teach history at the college level 30 years ago, that was just when social history was getting started. And McKay was, at that point, as a textbook, the only textbook that was available that had anything involving social history, and that's the kind of history that I like, the history of everyday life, of ordinary people. They're not simply acted upon by large forces. They're not simply something that kings and uh, you know, emperors and, and generals and tyrants uh, control. Uh, but they make meaning of the world around them so that they engage in certain kinds of activities. They work, they play, they have sex, they have children, they have families, but they also make meaning. They also make art, they also write songs, they learn to understand the world around them. I really, really worked hard on the, the visual images in my chapters, and I know that Claire and Mary did too, of course. When I show the book to somebody, I often open it up and show them the visual images because if I can get them looking at one of the visuals, they're like, oh yes, that is a great image. That is a powerful image, the propaganda poster of the mother breastfeeding the child. And what's great about the ima that image is that it's paired with the mother's cross, which is this bronze medal that was given to women who had borne more than four children. And it came with a sign letter from Hitler. And one thing we try to do in this book was pair images like this, images of sort of a visual representation with the image of an artifact. I would like students to leave the course um, aware that people have many different perspectives on the past, and so we try really hard to include primary sources from different perspectives, to choose images that highlight different elements of people's lives so that they don't just have a narrative, a linear narrative, or one story over time, but they become aware of all the multiple stories that go into making a history of Western society. A theme throughout the book is this newer view, view of Europe as part of an of a interconnected world. So people moving out from Europe, migration, immigration, people moving into Europe, portraying Europe itself also as less uniform than maybe earlier editions had. In other words, the chapters that I wrote on the Middle Ages have much more about Jews and Muslims. Europe was not a fully Christian society in the Middle Ages. There were, you know, Spain was completely ruled by Muslims and there were lots of Jews in places and what did this mean to be Jewish, to be an outsider in that way. So we've tried to make a bigger story uh, of looking at the variety that's in Europe um, and a Europe that's more tightly uh, connected at different points with the world beyond. Mm -hmm.